Hey guys, welcome back to the Bureau. Last time we uh, won the war, saved humans, saved the human race, and generally killed, destroyed all the alien menace and whatnot. But we're not done. Uh, because there is one more thing we haven't done, and that is the Hangar 6 R&D DLC, which is a prequel to the main game. Starring Agent Nico Da Silva as he leads a team in a radical experiment to battle a dangerous new contagion. So yeah, <laughs> let's get started. And uh, basically I'm doing this now because XCOM 2 came out about 10 days ago as, as of the time of recording this anyways. I don't know when I'm putting this up, but I never do when I do that, so yeah. We're gonna... Brightness, uh, that's good enough. Uh, this is good for the screen. It's a little vertically off-center for me. I think it's just because the top part's a bit cropped off on the TV, but it'll be okay. And we're going to be on Veteran Difficulty, so let's go. On Veteran and Commander Difficulties, agents can only be recruited while you are in the Observation Room. The game will end if all of your agents die. Hangar 6 R&D. Oh yeah, we're back in the 60s. 62, apparently, according to the little Roman numerals down at the bottom. Girl on a typewriter. Oh, her clothes just came into focus. You don't understand. Agent De Silva, I do not see how you would call that art. Trust me, Doc. When it comes to art, you gotta look past the surface. Mm. He's looking at art. Art should be beautiful landscapes or a basket of fruit, not... What was it again? Soup cans. <laughs> the man must be dreadfully dull. I understood that reference. Oh, I should invite you to one of his parties. I must let her folk know that you agents have too much free time. <laughs> Nico keeps staring at the girls. Last month's been nothing but hunting down infected until you dragged me all the way out here. Speaking of, what are we doing here? The Bureau's duty, of course, protecting the nation. This job never gets old. We filming a movie in here? Not quite. Although you and your team will be performing for an audience of a sort. Ooh. The this infected men you have brought in. Do you know why they act so erratically? I'm guessing because of the black stuff coming from their eyes? We believe someone, or something, is controlling them. Probably the Russians. Who else would it be? Your mom? Tell me, Agent of Silva. What do you know about modern psychopharmacology? Hey, what I do in my own time is my business, Doc. <laughs> uh, perks are unique to each class. Use them to customize an agent's combat skills and abilities. We're back in the 60s, guys. Back when the Bureau was more about fighting Russians instead of aliens. Your team will be administered a chemical that enables a psychic connection with an infected subject. Creepy. Psychic? We're going into someone's head? Not exactly. You will be exploring their mental framework Ooh. in environments designed to evoke certain memories of the subject. Like so whose farm? mind will we be connecting to? This is Subject 23. Agent Donovan. We were lucky to find the subject in the early stages of infection. Alright, well is this gonna be safe for me? Because I don't want to get all goopy. At least not yet. Won't end up like him, will I? The process is entirely safe. Good to know. Once you are connected, you will overcome the infection's defenses. Wait, what defenses? Well, it may not be entirely safe. Oh, great. Okay, I ranked up. Let's look around a little bit. This is kind of neat. Okay, there's a trial plan. Agent Nicholas De Silva will undergo an experimental test to establish a connection to an infected subject using a combination of psychoreactive compounds and emotionally resonant environments. Okay. Through this connection with Subject 23, we will be able to better understand the behavioral abnormalities of psychoplasmosis and perhaps uncover a means of treatment. So what happened to the other 22 subjects? I believe Agent De Silva is the agent most qualified to assist with this unorthodox approach. I guess because Carter is still a drunken mess? And not, you know, bonded with a saru or whatever. I don't know. Compound exposure. The application of psychoreactive gas in advanced psychological study is still in its infancy, and many of its results on a subject's perception have proven quite curious. Most notable is the sense of omniscience and omnipotence, matched by hallucinations of strange, almost magical tools and weaponry. 
Upon first exposure, subjects report hallucinations of distorted space and time dilation. This is often followed by a sense of disembodiment, self-awareness from an outside perspective, and even empathic projections. Seeing a scene as if from someone else's viewpoint. <laughs> I get it. This is especially common when used in group studies or between subjects with a strong pre-existing bond. So that was, I guess that's a hand wave to why we can see, you know, aliens and stuff. There's a backpack schematic. It's the endurance pack. Cool, increases max health and whatnot, and we have a casualty list of no one. Suspicious, considering he's subject 23, but I'm not gonna delve too deeply. Prepare your team. I will guide you from here. Okay. Doc, you really think this psychic stuff is gonna work? As you said, Agent De Silva, you have to look past the surface. All right, so we have one of these guys again to use to uh, select agents. We've got four right now, in addition to ourself. Also, we have a new... We have all four of the basic human weapons. And we have... Wait, no, is that only four? Five, because of the other pistol. Yeah. And we've got frag grenades. Oop. And we've only got the standard pack and the endurance pack. Okay. And there is a... A, ch a trophy, or a couple trophies I want to get for this run. Uh, one of them involves not using lifts, uh, a drone, or the mind control power-up, so just kind of sticking with the non-alien type abilities. And the other one is to not use alien weaponry, which means like all the laser guns and stuff, which is probably less doable for me, but I'm going to at least try the ability one. So first we've got Enos Cole. Uh, you are a support. And full disclosure, I did try playing this earlier today, but I had my settings wrong and it was recording at the wrong resolution and it was just gross, so I figured I'd just restart instead of, you know, dealing with it, because I'm weird like that. We're going to name the support... Dog. Wait, no, not, not Enos Dog. Dang it, this is stupid. Dog Meat, because one of our best supports was the Lone Wanderer. From Fallout 3. And Dogmeat was a black and white dog, like mostly black with a white with little white bits. So we're gonna you know live up to that. As far as perks, uh let's see, you got the shield sphere for rank two. The support agent can deploy a heavy shield generator, temporarily blocking all incoming fire while his squad fires safely from within. Cool. And then either weaken or disrupt, so I could destroy shields or armor. Ah, uh, I think disrupt is more useful because shields can't be replaced or healed, but she but or no shields can be replaced and recharged, but armor can't be. So actually, it might be smarter to get weaken. I don't know how many like mutons we're gonna be facing though, so I might go for disrupt anyways. Yeah, I'll go for disrupt. The support agent drops an enemy's shields and temporarily disables them. This can neutralize elite troops or commanders. Yeah, because uh, destroying armor is a permanent damage change, but shields can be recharged, so doing damage to that is smarter. And we'll give you the endurance pack as well. Next we have a commando. We're going to also give him an endurance pack. As far as perks, you get the force push. I mean, pulse wave. <laughs> Repel nearby enemies, <laughs> knocking them away and disorienting them. Damage is low, but it can keep foes at bay or push them into a trap. Neat. And let's see, you can get tunnel vision, which increases damage on taunted targets, or machine gunner, which increases accuracy and damage with weapons in general. Plus, you get a health boost. And yeah, all of our starting agents are at rank 3, which is nice, because we don't have to worry about ranking them up as much. And we don't even need to worry about, like, um, recruiting new ones if we're good enough, and I'd like to think I am, <laughs> even though I'm not. Uh, but I'm going to go with... Hmm. Tunnel Vision, because I like taunts. And as for customization... Well, I'm going to name you another Fallout 3 character, I guess. Actually, I don't guess. I, I did this last time, so I'm just going with what I did earlier. <laughs> Liberty Prime, because why not? He's a massive, like, 20-foot-tall, at least, tank thing. 
that were dark colors, but I'm going to have a little weird colored belt because why not. Next we've got a recon agent. Uh, we are going to go with, uh, well we're going to give you the endurance pack. As far as perks, hmm, increases damage and accuracy, decreases chance to be hit. I'd rather do more damage. And then diversion or cloak, invisible or distract? Uh, distract. Is your name like Ian? Create a projection duplicate of the recon agent, drawing fire and distracting enemies. Too much damage will destroy the projection. Neat. Uh, and customization, you are the recon. Hey, you're gonna be a yawn. You're not gonna be a yawn. You're gonna be a reference to the previous game because I had a robot A15 which I took from Teleglitch, but he was the only agent to die. So you are gonna be robot A14. I also had A16 who did survive the mission. So you're gonna be like a precursor, and you're gonna wear a black vest. Actually, a yellow shirt works pretty well. Pants are also going to be black. Your tie, hmm, purplish, because that's like the complementary color. I know my things. Too bad I can't change your shoes, because they kind of stand out. Next, we've got a guy named Madison Boswell, engineer. He's going to be a character from Weird World, Return to Infinite Space, because I did that for a roguelike as well. We've got two roguelike characters and two Fallout characters because I'm not very creative. Fog Osiris, the, character, the captain's name that I wound up with on Teleglitch. I'm going to give you a green jumpsuit. With dark black trim. A whiter shirt. And a very dark tie. Because why not? As far as perks, well you're going to get the mine, of course. The engineer's landmine explodes when approached. Place it in choke points to limit the enemy's movement, or to set up a trap. Cool. And then you got either the Demolitions Expert, which makes their mine recharge faster, or the Shotgunner, which increases accuracy and damage. Um, I'm gonna go with the Demolitions Expert, because you have a shotgun, which isn't great for accuracy anyways. And then we're gonna give you the Endurance Pack as well, so we should have... Yeah, too bad I can't customize you, but I guess it wouldn't make sense in, like, the whole overarching canon. Okay, oh, right, I gotta add people. <laughs> I'm gonna go with... Let's go with the two Fallout characters. Because I've been playing a lot of Fallout lately after getting my PC stuff done. <laughs> Liberty Prime and Dogmeat. And then there's me, Nico Da Silva. I guess. Prepared? Head to the elevator to begin the test. Okay. Scene is set. Subject is prepared. Sprayers are ready. Now we just need a team. And a little luck. And now all the people are in the little base area. Which is kind of nice. Except for these two, they're just kind of here smoking and whatnot. Because they're lazy or something. Or actually, no, it's just the two I have on my team, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, anyways, we are going to do that next time. Uh, so, yeah, next time on the Bureau, we're going to start the trial. I'll see you then, guys. Take care.